Gary Adams is a great friend of ours and an amazing dog trainer. We've been wrapping his company logo on his vehicle for years, but they're never a standard vehicle. There's always a little surprise when he comes in, so I can't wait to see what he has for us today. All right, so what do we got here, Gary? 95 Mitsubishi Delica. This is imported from Japan. You know me and my weird vehicles. Yeah, this might be the weirdest one I've got yet. This is a 2.8 turbo diesel, four-wheel drive <laughs> minivan. Cool. The new logo that you helped me develop, mm -hmm. I want that plastered up on here. Gotcha. But I want the entire thing matte black. Matte black, so okay. everything. Cool, so a matte black base with the new orange and white logo. Yes, so then, then that'll be in high gloss. Oh, nice, for the and contrast. And for the contrast. Yeah. But with all the angles and everything on this car, do you think what's better, paint or wrap? I, we could wrap it. Um, it's definitely a wrappable vehicle, uh, but I mean, it might work better to do paint. I don't know. We'll talk to Dale and see what he thinks. Yeah, because there's so many curves. Yeah, I mean, it, it might is, end up ahead. being a combination of both paint and vinyl. Yeah, because yeah. I want the that really bold contrast. And when we do the logo, it's oval. Yeah. So I literally want it to kind of be this whole side, almost oversized. Yeah. So where it kind of crawls up over the top. Right. You know, wraps around the back. You know, as long as we have the dog and the verbiage stay perfect. Okay. So we'll do it to where when this thing's going down the road, it's going to be a matte black, four-wheel drive, Japanese import minivan with a bright orange logo on it. Wow, this is going to be get, the coolest one. <laughs> might get a little attention. Yeah, a little. Jason always does amazing designs. I mean, the guy just does fantastic work. I, I'm really particular, so I always have a vision of what I want and I think I've got it figured out 100%. And then Jason comes back in and he always has a way to tweak it and make it work and fit and look even much better than I could have ever imagined. What's your time frame on getting this done? How, what's the schedule like? Uh, within the next month, I mean, I've got a lot of things to do. We've got to get things painted, powder coated. Right. It's getting a two inch Ironman 4x4 lift. Oh, cool. New shocks. Nice. It's got getting Toyo Open Country bigger tires. Also, space in the tires. Snorkel? Oh, yeah. And it's massive. I mean, it's here all the way up to here. Yeah. But then it gives it like ram air induction on top of the fact that it's turbo diesel. Right. So, little horsepower. And then I might actually visit my good buddy Alberto. Oh, yeah. We're going to tweak on the turbo a little bit, kick the horsepower up just a little. Nice. Why not turn it into a drift vehicle? I'd be out there on the track <laughs> driving people nuts, man. They go crazy. Like, what the heck? Um, a lot of the guys in the drift community are all into the whole JDM, right. which I don't know if you know the JDM. JDM is a little bit, yeah. Japanese Direct Motors. Mm -hmm. Essentially, now there's some controversy here. Essentially, people in the community will say if it's not right hand drive, steering wheel on the right hand side, it's not a real JDM. Oh, uh, I gotcha. <sighs> Realistically, a Japanese car is a Japanese car. Right. But a lot of guys in that community have already seen this. Right. And a lot of the drift guys I had out the track last weekend, they were all, dude, this is the ultimate tow vehicle. They literally <laughs> yeah. want one so they can pull their drift car right. out to the drift track. Nice. So nice. who knows? We might end up doing that, throwing Alberto's car on it. <laughs> cool. Just go out to the drift track once it's all done. You can put a tow package on? Oh, yeah. We might have to do that too. Nice, nice. They're really hard to come by. There's a really high demand for them in other countries. So as I got more and more involved in the JDM scene and in the car scene with a lot of different people. I got to know certain importers and then I basically told them years ago, you know, I really want one of these. But it really takes that long even for them to find it and that's their business of actually finding rare cars and importing them. Well, I knew a little bit about JDM vehicles, but when we talked about the modifications he was doing, I had no idea how he was getting his aftermarket parts. You know, even when we're gonna actually do the lift, this door is actually so close there's a kit, a little shop in Russia. Oh yeah. <laughs> made the kit, eBay, 67 bucks. And what it does is actually spaces out this door. Oh yeah. So then it comes out because we have no clearance back there. Yeah. So to do the bigger rims, do the bigger tires. You're gonna need a little more. It's room. gonna do that. What's cool, they're really popular in Russia, Australia, and Canada. So there's all these companies that make aftermarket parts for these things, even though they're not popular. Here. Ah. This is the coolest van ever, man. I want one. <laughs> Let's get you one. Yeah, yeah. I know the people. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I met Dale, God, it's been over 10 years. This is the 10th car for me. The very first one they did was just this little Volkswagen bug that I had when I was first starting. We went from that into a full-size F350 four-wheel drive van. 
And it just went from there. I had an Audi, I had, God, geez, an FJ Cruiser, then the little Honda Activans, the tiny truck, the Mini Cooper. Several of them actually went to car shows. The wraps were so good and they had so much custom work done on the cars. What is this crazy thing? This is a 1995 Mitsubishi oh. Delica. Technically right, they call right. it the space gear for whatever reason. It does <laughs> kind of look like the uh, the monorail. So That's it's, insane. Yeah, I see how it's all jacked up a little bit there, huh? Yeah. Like, so, you know, I mean, oh, man, let me yeah. jump up inside here a minute. Wow. Sits up really this high. This thing's crazy, man. The nice little steering wheel. Got your wood grain. Yeah, yeah. this thing's ridiculous. How do you drive with right hand steering? I mean, is it? It's not as weird as you think because that's what everybody thinks. Yeah. But when you get over there, you realize how many years have you been a passenger in a car and you've been on that side of the car kind of driving the down the road. Yeah. How many of us have actually hit the imaginary brake pedal oh, yeah, where yeah, we're yeah. You know, oh, yeah. doing when, the when thing? Christy's driving. So you're just sitting on the opposite side of the car, but you've been there. All right, what else about this thing? What, what's oh, going it's on? Got, in it's the, got the, so much cool stuff. Right, so we got, got a sunroof up front. You know, we're gonna be putting lift kit on it, bigger tires, all that cool oh, stuff. Oh, you're gonna jack it up. Oh, bigger. hell yeah, got right. to. This vehicle was insane. I thought the coolest thing was gonna be the steering wheel on the right-hand side, but that was only the beginning. This thing's a really weird thing. Yeah. Japanese vehicles, they do this on a lot of their trucks, minivans, things like that. When you're sitting in the front seat, this is a wide-angle mirror, right. so you can see right behind you. Really? Huh? It, it, Japanese vehicle Funky, thing. but that's cool. Yeah. yeah, all right, so what's on the inside here, man? So, obviously we got seats. Yeah. These can fold down, they flip up completely out of the way. Oh, for real? But you can sit three in the back. Nice, and then are those got... seats backwards? <laughs> yeah, what? well, they, they rotate. They rotate, so yeah. they'll go front, oh, they that's can crazy, face man. Forwards, <laughs> backwards, they can face each other, or that wow. seat could actually face you. You can sit in the van, look out the door, whatever. That one can face that way. Yeah, man. You had kids in here fighting in all different directions, yeah, spinning you know, the chairs around. It's a little <laughs> top heavy, so if they get a little too rough, you just shake that steering wheel, they'll flop. Oh, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> that's crazy. But here, check this well, out. Man, Come around the other I'm, side. Look right, up at the roof. Got? Yeah. So we got a regular sunroof up here, right? Yep. But then we've got these guys in the back. Oh, no, so there's that. literally, they call it the crystal light roof. So it's a limited production. Yeah. Kind of gives you that uh, space shuttle Dang, feel. That's crazy. So you said it's a 95. They still make these things? Yeah, they still make them. It's current, really? but Japanese imports, if the vehicle didn't have all the emission stuffs for America, you have to wait for 25 years uh -huh. and then you can import them. Wow. So now it can be imported. So you can't get the new, new ones and the dogs freaking love it. I put them in there, that back seat, they're like lit, sitting on the couch, they're all looking up at the skylights, uh -huh. they dig it. They even got, I mean, who does, why don't, why don't we have this in other cars? That's like, like doormat the stuff doormat. from the yep. factory to get a little mud off your feet before you get in the damn van. Sure. Yeah, they, they definitely put some thought into this engineering, right. huh? Oh, I've one, never one seen anything thing. like it. So this what? is a footrest when the seats are facing forward <laughs> or a little table if you have something to eat. That's crazy. It's hard for people in America to understand what like the Japanese car market is like. In Japan, it's a big deal. Like there, because everybody's so congested in the city, when you get an opportunity to go see the country, which for people who live in Japan, they don't get to do it as much as we think, it's a big deal. So all those skylight windows and the way it's set up, yeah, that was like a really big deal for them to just go drive in the country. All right, man, well, I gotta go sit in the driver's seat. Man, this thing is ridiculous, man. I've never even seen anything like this. Oh, yeah. That's pretty crazy, man. I like it. I like it. What kind of gas mileage this thing gets? Well, because it's diesel, I'm averaging 30 to 40 miles a gallon. Really? Yeah, huh? which is one of the advantages is, mm -hmm. you know, if this was a Suburban, which is about the same weight, what, we're getting seven miles a gallon? Yeah. And I'm getting 30 to 40. So it's really good for the business, but yep. then also once we get done, huge billboard, you get something that gets people's attention even without a wrap on it, then we put the wrap on and sure. everybody wants to look it's at crazy. it. crazy. What kind of reactions do you get right now? Like, you've yeah. only had this for a couple weeks, Yeah, right? it's only been a couple Got weeks. It. I mean, you know, I'll get the same thing where people are like, aren't you on the wrong side? Uh -huh. And of course, yeah. everybody gets mad and I look back at them and say, no, I'm on the right side. The right side. And it's just the ba-dum-bum. -bum -bum. Yeah, crazy. But hey, it's all right. All right, well, I'm looking forward to this. I'm gonna get with Renee, I'll get with Jason. We'll discuss whether it'd be a better candidate for paint or mm -hmm. a wrap, and then we kind of figure that out and take it from there. 
Now you're going to be doing some more stuff, the rims, yeah, all that kind of stuff, lifted, right? it's getting lifted, it's getting bigger tires to rack, we have a lot of little things. Okay. So I'll get all those things ready prior to while we're working on all the details. Jason's figuring out exactly how we're going to lay out the graphics, we figured out what's going to be paint. Yep. I trust you guys okay. on all that. Yeah, so you we're do. good. All right, man, thank you very much you for bringing it, it back to us. Can't yeah. wait to get this thing done. Absolutely. I think this one's going to be cool. It's awesome. So all of my vehicles have been 90% wrap except for like little things where it might be like a door handle where you know it's going to get a lot more wear and tear so they end up painting that so it'll last a lot longer for me. With the Delica, it's got such interesting body lines and small little integral pieces. I think paint's going to do better but I'm going to leave it up to the guys because I know they're going to go with whatever lasts the longest and holds up the best for me. So we'll see what they come up with. Now Gary's going to go figure out the rest of his modifications on his new van while we figure out how to make his ideas come to life. Paint or wrap? Stay tuned to find out.